out, 31. Welcome to the last section in chapter three. We're going to do section 3.7. We're going to take a look at inverse functions. So by the end of this section, we wanna be able to verify if functions are inverses of one another, find or evaluate a, the inverse of a function, determine the domain and range of an inverse function, and then use the graph of a one-to-one -one function to graph its inverse function on the same axes. So we're going to look at these inverse functions analytically, numerically, and graphically. We wanna look at it through the same three lenses that we've been looking at a lot of our problems. So let's get the definition of an inverse function down, and then I wanna show you how to verify whether or not two functions are inverse functions of one another. So inverse functions, if you have your, your regular function, so let f of x be a one-to-one -one function, and if you remember, from earlier on in this chapter are to be a one-to-one -one function. Not only do you have to pass the vertical line test to be a function, but you have to pass the horizontal line test to be a one-to-one -one function. And that, that idea, that, that notion of one-to-one -one functions was discussed in section 3.1. All right, then here is our notation. You have f with a little superscript of negative one, and we call that the inverse function of f if these two conditions are met. So we've got f to the negative one, we call this f inverse. That's how I would say this out loud, f inverse. Oops, that looks like it's one word, finverse, but it is f inverse. Okay, so the two conditions that have to be met in order for functions to be inverse functions of one another is you have to be able to compose them in either direction, meaning you do f inverse of f or f of f inverse, so you swap out which one's the inner and outermost function. But when you compose these two functions and you plug x in, if you get back x back out, they're gonna be inverse functions, all right? So if f inverse of f of x is equal to x and if f of f inverse of x is equal to x, then the two functions are inverse functions of one another. So we're gonna have to check both directions because there are going to be times where two functions uh, are, if you do the f inverse of f of x, you get x back out, but this, this condition won't be met or vice versa. Sometimes this condition is met and this one isn't. So you do need to check it in both directions. All right, so with that, I'm gonna scooch up. We're gonna take a look at example one. All right, and then I want us to see, do we think all right, let's, let's take a look at this, the directions. Let f and g be defined by f of x equaling 2x plus 5 and g of x equaling a half x minus 5, respectively. Is g the inverse of f? All right, so I have my two functions. Just taking a look at them, they're both lines, right? This one's got a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 0, 5. This one's got a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of 0, negative 5. So we want to see if they are inverse functions of one another. So I'm gonna draw a little separator. The reason I'm doing that is because there's two conditions I'll need to check. I'll need to check that g of f of x is equal to x, and I'll also need to check that f of g of x is equal to x. So I will have to check this in both directions, and both will have to work, all right? If even one of them fails, then the answer to this question would be no. So ultimately, when you're doing these, these types of examples, this is a yes or no question. Yes, both of these were met, or no, not both of them were met. All right, so let's try this. I'll do f of g first. So I'm gonna say, is f of g of x equal to x? I'm gonna put a little question mark over that equal sign right now because I'm just not sure. So let's do the work. All right, f of g of x. I'm gonna start with my innermost function, so I'm gonna substitute g of x here, which is 1 half x minus 5. So I need one half, f of 1 half x minus 5. All right, the f rules say whatever's in the parentheses, substitute it here. So for my particular example, 1 half x minus 5 is in the parentheses, so I'm gonna substitute that in for x right there. So this is going to be 2 times 1 half x minus 5. All right, and then don't forget the plus 5. Right, because f of x is 2x plus 5, so I have 2x plus 5. All right, let's see if we get this to equal x. If we get it to equal x, I'll check the second condition. If we don't, I can just stop. All right, so this is going to become 2 times 1 half x. I'm going to distribute. That's x. That's a good sign. Um, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. All right, plus 5. 
Well, if you're taking a look at this, let me scooch this up just a little bit more so that you can see my work. All right, when I simplify here, I, I am actually left with x minus five, right? That does not equal x. So that's a bad sign for us. I already know the answer to this question is no because I didn't even meet the first condition. f of g of x is not equal to x. So right from here, I could stop the problem and just say, let me scooch this up just a little bit more so I can write my sentence. I could say that just based on this, I know f and g are not inverse functions of one another. Okay. Now, because I'm curious and I like math and I, I want to demonstrate this a little bit more, let's pretend, even though it didn't, let's just pretend this did equal x. If it did, I want to show you the next condition you would have needed to check. If this was equal to x, you wouldn't have stopped the problem, but you would have needed to check that composition in the other order also had the situation where you, when you plugged in an x, you got an x back out. So let me just try it in the other direction because I'm curious. So if, I, if this had worked out, if this was equal to x, I would have gone over to here. So let's do g of f of x. I'm gonna start with my innermost function, which is two x plus five. So this is g of two x plus five. And according to this function, whatever's in the parentheses gets substituted here. So this is going to become one half 2x plus 5 minus 5. All right, so here we go. Let's distribute. 1 half times 2x is x. Good. 1 half times 5, 5 halves, ooh, minus 5. Right? These are not the same number. So ultimately, I'm going to be left with what, x minus 5 halves. And that's because 5 halves is 2 and a half. Right? So 2 and a half minus 5 is negative 2 and a half. All right, and still, this is not equal to x. So I'll, just, I'll put a little sad face. So in either direction, we, we got neither of these conditions were met, and I, I would have had to have both of them met in order to say yes to this question. And like I said, it doesn't matter what order you go in first. If one of them fails, you're done. At least you're done in, in terms of then G would not be the inverse of F. All right, so before we get out of here, I do want to talk about this little blurb here at the bottom because there's a couple times in math where folks double up on notation, and, and this is going to be one of them. So I want to make sure we're clear here. The negative one in this expression is not a negative exponent. And what I'm trying to say is we've dealt with negative exponents. Let me just put a little aside here. When you see something like x to the negative two, you know that's the fraction one over x squared. So if you see x to the negative one, that would be one over x, and, and that is true. But when this negative one is attached to a function, it means something different. You do not interpret it as a negative exponent, so you would not tell me f to the negative one of x is one over f of x. It's not the reciprocal. This means the inverse function, which is something entirely different. So I just wanna be clear here, when this negative one, when that symbol, that exponent of negative one is attached to a function, it is not referring to the reciprocal, right? It's not a negative exponent. It actually means the inverse function of f. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna practice finding these inverse functions, okay? I'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks, bye.